Hello and welcome to another Star Citizen podcast. I am your adorable host, Board Gamer, and I'm here with a equally adorable Zinya. Say hello, equally adorable Zinya. Hello, equally adorable Zinya. We're going to be talking about some Star Citizen stuff today, as we always do. It is a Star Citizen podcast. It is the 8th of July. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the Saber Raven variant that we think we know the name of. We've got some Alpha 3.24 progress to go over with the Eva Cardi patch and the cargo hauling missions and stuff. Star Citizen chairs. That that's what I'll say. And a little bit of 4.0 stuff um, with serve meshing and uh, the FPS horde mode. Oh, also, there's been more rumours with Citizen Con stuff and uh, oh, who might might actually sort of be turning up to that celebrity wise. Um, but take it with a huge pinch. So this is what we sort of expected. Um, anyway, but we'll come to that. Zen. Yes. A Saber Raven variant. Yes. Yeah, there's a new Aegis ship that they sort of teased with some green sort of uh, iconography or, or some... some gr- it, was, it was greeny. It looks a bit like a Saber Raven. And uh, previously, John Crew had talked about a quantum enforcement, a quantum dampener version of the Saber Raven that they had been working on. And it's probably that. And... Um, Also, a name has been leaked and rumoured now of being the Peregrine. (laughs) So, okay, I heard you giggle there. What what do you think of the name Peregrine? Uh, Peregrines are cute. You can't name a ship after that. It's a falcon. Yeah, but it's it's still cute. It's a deadly predator, like a a kitten or a cat. Yeah, probably, but they're still cute. They're all cute. That's the problem. Um, Yeah, it's a bit of a, um, a soft name. And peregrines mm. are relatively cute for deadly birds of prey. I don't know. I, I still think they should have called it the raptor. Yeah, you, you're obsessed. What? No, no, I, I'm just, I just think I'm right. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. That was, it was just a rumour. Um, but you think it's a, it's a cute name, potentially not fitting the image uh, yeah. Of, of, yeah, sort of a combat um, ship, sort of interdictor, interceptor kind of thing. But um, I'm interested to know what people think in the comments. Do you like the name Peregrine? Do you think it's going to be called the Peregrine? Or do you think it's just a dumb, stupid rumour? Let's move on to Alpha 3.24. Uh, you haven't been able to play 3.24 yet because it's still an Eva Cardi Ah. Uh, have, you, have you been playing it? Have you got, you've got access to Eva Cardi now? I was going to say, I haven't been playing it, but I believe I've got access to Eva Cardi now. Oh, you've got access to Eva Cardi. Okay, They're good. Good. I'm glad. So the cargo hauling stuff for it well the the build for 3.24 is still relatively unstable so you're not missing that much there's a load of cool stuff there it, it is a evocati chore to be stress testing that though for the most part it's a very cool build it's really solid as far as evocati stuff goes but yeah still still unstable too unstable to push the first wave ptu uh, though that will probably be changing pretty soon because Cloud and Pyram are trying to push that to first wave PTU and, and wider PTU as soon as possible. They've just put in the cargo hauling missions into, into the Evocati build. Basically, this is you getting cargo from uh, someone. So you go, I'm taking this mission. It goes, you can then spawn that cargo in your freight elevator and you will need to take it from where you currently are or wherever you've got the mission from um, to another station or distribution center or outpost or whatever. And they can pay reasonably well. Then it's the first time that we've had mission that goes, have a load of cargo, go here and take it there. Well, what do you think of that sort of stuff? Do you like, actually, cargo missions sound really, cargo hauling missions are essential, they sound really cool, or um, you're like, yeah, it's just it's just like a box mission, but bigger. Um, I mean, it is kind of like a box mission, but bigger, but I, I do enjoy those ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit more straightforward because obviously with the box missions it was like pick up these boxes and then deliver them to like three different places or pick them up from three different places and then deliver them to one place. Okay. If it's just pick up a load of cargo and then go and deliver it, that is fine. It's easy. So from what I've seen that is that is it, it, it is the potentially simpler than box missions. Yeah, so the stuff's clearly labelled which is one of the nice things. So you go Bam, I've taken this mission. I can uh, spawn the cargo up in my freight elevator. The cargo is clearly labelled as mission cargo and even Mm. tells you what mission it's for. And yeah, if you've got um, a party member with you and you've shared that quest, they can bring up the cargo in their their elevator as well. Sounds good. Yeah, it's it's so streamlined. It's like CIG actually thought about how to make the mission. (laughs) Um, And well, 
thought about making a mission that would go straight into players' hands, is, is a fair uh, way of saying that. And uh, yeah, absolutely love it. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't deliver all of the cargo either. You get rewards based on the amount that you actually delivered. Mm. I suppose that would be more important if there's sort of time-sensitive stuff or if there's stuff that can get damaged. I'm wondering if these sorts of missions would help with quanta, quantum, you know, with the whole... Quantum simulation economic- stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simulation. yeah, yeah. Obviously, we'd, we'd be helping to move commodities around the universe. Yeah, and, and then that ge- helps generate the dynamic sort of economy. Hmm. Um, and, and a lot of the economy is going to be the movement of goods, then the building of those at factory nodes and then the movement of that stuff to other places. Yeah, 100%. And then that generates missions for people as escorts, for pirates to go attack stuff, for interception, for trade routes to appear, tons of stuff. I think you're totally right with that. And um, I just think it's super important to get all that cargo stuff. And I love the fact that that cargo loop is pretty refined. Although I say that, I've not been able to actually complete one yet at all because the the build's unstable and there are lots of little bugs. I think like things like um, if you don't deliver the cargo within a certain amount of time, the goods are marked as stolen, so even if you you might be able to deliver like half of it or whatever, you, you get the rewards for it, but then, then you can't flog the, the the other half for a load of money. It's it's stolen yeah. goods, so they're not worth as much, stuff like that, and which is which is nice. And hopefully you'll get a reputation hit based on the cargo that you do deliver and don't deliver. But I don't want to have to like have one SCU of grain that I forgot to deliver and get a criminal rating and lose a load of reputation or something because of that. They did remove hover trolleys as well. Again? Oh, wait, no. I'm thinking of the other trolleys. No, no, yes. So hover trolleys, anytime they've got a word trolley and something goes wrong, but these hover trolleys have been removed. I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, It will be in the patch notes. Uh, Removed hover trolleys from shops due to causing some knock-on issues. Don't 100% know what those knock-on issues were. But yeah, hover trolley's been removed. They'll they'll probably return. They weren't essential because you've got um, the ability to get the gravity multi tools, and um, that mm. that's much more important. That that's going to allow you to do all your cargo management. Um, hover trolleys were funny, and um, I suppose m- makes sense you, seeing NPCs use them and stuff like that. But um, they don't have enough functionality in the game to be used over the tractor beams. But yeah, that's your cargo hauling stuff. There is a load of um, law updates in this latest patch as well. So it's no longer illegal to damage, destroy, tow, scrape, or structurally salvage an unowned vehicle. And it's no longer illegal to tow ships outside of green zones. So sort of sorting out those um, issues with doing those roles where you're like, I, I want to do salvage, but I don't want to get a criminal rating when I'm salvaging an unowned ship. <laughs> Or I don't want to get a criminal rating for towing someone's ship and things like that. So that stuff should be solved now. Uh, are you excited for 3.24? Are you looking forward to it? Or are you like, well, actually, I'm kind of looking forward to 4.0 and 3.24 as a side note. Yeah, um, I think I'm like 3.24 is not really bringing anything that I'm going to find exciting. So Okay. Well, um, when it comes out, if, as long as it's a nice, good, stable build when live, uh, we'll, we'll go through and do a load of different missions in, in 3.24 because I think it will be a nice calm before the storm of 4.0. Mm. So uh, it will be a nice uh, time to then use that to be able to compare to 4.0 when 4.0 launches. And uh, I don't think we play Star Citizen enough to actually play it and go, let's, let's do a full mission, like let's do this this full thing. I mean, I, I've only done like the Arlington gang missions once, maybe twice, ever, and they're... Uh, nice developed bounty hunting gameplay loop with um cattle ships and stuff in it so but yeah we'll, we'll look at that in the near future zin yeah do you know how you can get better at star citizen and potentially other games um get good yeah get a good <laughs> gaming chair oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah um and what better gaming chair than the most expensive gaming chair that you can buy uh no no so Star Citizen basically have gone into, uh, they've officially licensed some Star Citizen themed chairs with Monster Tech or MT Sim. And you've seen these now, right? Yep. What do you think of them? You, you can uh, be honest. I wouldn't buy one. Okay, so that's interesting. I wouldn't buy one either if I had loads of money and it was part of the Sim rig stuff that I'm doing, then I might. But they're expensive. And I have an amazing chair with my Herman Miller Aeron. And you've got a pretty good chair, right? Yeah, I've got a pretty good chair. 
so I don't really know what else there is out there for flight sim chairs because obviously it's it's mm -hmm. got that that cut out for your your yeah stick. For your joystick to go with central joystick yeah no it's nothing else it's nothing rude <laughs> get your mind out the gutter so I so I don't know what else is out there I don't know I do, do they have non branded chairs that are cheaper uh, I mean you could get something cheaper right and um, although I that's a good that's a good point that there'll be cheaper stuff I just I've not seen it so that's a good but you're paying for the premium branding and because it's a high spec sim chair hmm. so if you're within the market that you want a expensive but pretty pretty solid chair um that you want as part of a sim rig or you just love the the Mirai brand or RSI or whatever chair, then maybe it's for you. But they are expensive. They are eight hundred to thousand dollars sort of thing, and yeah, that's that's just a lot of money for a chair. It's, it's a lot of money, is it? Yeah. So their their standard chairs are a hundred and fifty dollars cheaper. So just the standard Sorry, MT Euros. Sim chair. Yeah. So non branded. So non branded. So you're paying. A, not paying a huge amount for the uh, extra for the branding then but it, it, it is a sizable amount and so I, I, I just think if you're a star citizen fan and you're building a, your, your sim rig it's sort of perfect for that right like mm. the good old sim chair i mean they look great i have not used one personally so i cannot compare it i can't imagine it'd be the sort of chair that you'd spend a lot of time in though yeah but when you do go on it the immersion and how, how does it make you feel like you're a boss i mean it might <laughs> yeah so uh, I'll mess around with one when I when I get the chance to, um, whether that be at a, like a convention or a, or a show or something. And I, I suspect we'll see these at Sets and Con, right? We'll be able to sit in some of these. Oh, quite probably, yeah. CIG may be doing some other brand deals and licensing some stuff like probably Hotas and stuff again. They're gonna, they're going to be looking at things like that almost certainly now that they've got the chairs to go with it. But yeah, just just an interesting one. I don't know how people feel about those. They're like, ugh, stupid and expensive, or oh my god, amazing must have, um, or somewhere in between. Or well, actually, um, with my sim rig, I'm gonna get this chair instead because it's better or whatever. Mm. Yeah, sort of interested to know what people think there. Four point eight stuff. There was a inside Star Citizen. I think it's the it was the third of it was the last of the sort of like um, fluff inside Star yeah. Citizens. And so now we should be moving it, I believe, into the 4.0 cycle properly this week. They talked about server meshing. They went, server meshing's good. It was uh, better than they expected, the sort of development of it. It was, uh, they, they had uh, a lot of stuff that just worked and, and worked well. And obviously they had some terrible problems with persistent entity streaming and stuff, which they didn't really talk about. They went, well, actually, let's talk about the replication layer stuff, um, which did go pretty well. Um, and the crash recovery, which... The crash recovery, it took around half an hour originally to uh, restore a, a crash server, which is down to like a minute now, um, which is obviously a lot better. Yeah, server meshing, static's coming in 4.0. It looks like it might actually be relatively refined and um, they, they're confident with it. And then they're going to be building on to sort of a dynamic server meshing after that, where they go, well, actually, we can spin up and down servers at, at will based on population. But I'm I'm really looking forward to 4.0 with Pyro serve meshing and a ton of new gameplay stuff. And I think, as Zin said, she's uh, sort of more focused on that than she is for 3.24. Mm. I think a lot of people have fatigue waiting for 4.0, but I do think that that wait is close to being over. Uh, it was sort of like probably September, well, more likely October, Citizen Con time. Well, we should have that. Uh, are you excited for things like the FPS horde mode that might turn up? As part of Arena Commander, or you like? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll certainly give it a try. Yeah, it might, it might be really good if the netcode's a bit better and the animations and, and stuff are a bit more smooth and it's not janky. Yeah, it would it would great fun. If it's not jank, great fun. Mm. If it's jank, then uh, Mister Zinia, your uh, your partner will uh, will enjoy <laughs> messing around in it, but uh, I don't think it will have much staying power until they they get some of that stuff sorted. The last thing I really wanted to talk about here as well was CitizenCon. We mentioned that a little bit earlier, uh, 19th mm. and 20th of October. Uh, there was going to be a gala on the 18th, which got cancelled. We're not 100% sure why it got cancelled, but uh, I did talk to a, a couple of people. I've talked to a few people now, and they all confirmed similar-ish things, which was, I say they confirmed, uh, they suggested that certain celebrities were 
uh, either going to turn up for the gala or are going to turn up for Citizen Con uh, that are in Squadron 42. Um, and that was Henry Cavill, John Rhys Davies, and Mark Hamill. Those were all the names that were consistently mentioned. Mm. And we know that they're in Squadron 42. We know that there's some of the um, biggest people in Squadron 42. I'm not sure to the level, of, actually, of Henry Cavill's character in Squadron 42. I'm not sure how, how much he appears in it. But yeah, so we don't we don't know much about him, really, do we? No, not not a huge amount, anyway. And we haven't seen his character, um, sort of like in any m- uh, meaningful scenes or whatever. Uh, it's mostly been pictures, in fact. I think of um of Henry Carroll's character, but um, yeah, I just uh, I I think Citizen Con this year is going to be really big, the biggest that, that we've had. Um, I do think there's going to be some major Squadron Forty Two announcements. Um, release date is going to almost certainly going to be one of them, and um, I'm hoping that I get to meet those celebrities there and that they um, don't destroy my image of them i hope they're all nice <laughs> are, are you excited for it's gone are you excited to meeting the, those celebrities you, you must, i would you, i wouldn't want to meet all... them yeah yeah no i just i i can't talk to people like that i can't talk to normal people so but do you, do you want me to pretend like you're no 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 like this this is this is my friend saying she she's mute <laughs> Henry Cavill. Oh, yeah, she's she's gesturing. She wants you to sign her boobies. Yeah, that's what she wants to do. <laughs> that's that's all that that's all that gesture is. Just <laughs> oh my god. I hope I hope none of them watch this podcast. They won't. Don't worry. No one will know. No one watches this. It's it'll all be good. fine. It'll it'll be fine. Um, really looking forward to Susan Con. I think it's going to be uh, an amazing time. I promise not to drink too much. That's that's my board game of promise. <laughs> So goodbye, Zin. Goodbye, Zin. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, yeah, I've been a bit manic in this one, but um, I'm waiting for my couch to arrive. I've got a, new, got a new sofa. I'm not sure why you need to know that, but that's my life. I'm a futuristic cyborg sent back in time for one purpose. Give me your boots, your jacket, and your NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. Get NordVPN if you want to live on the internet. It's the only thing that will protect you against Skynet and my Terminator impression. It gives you greater accessibility, security and privacy on the internet as well. You should use the links below. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For July we're giving away a Constellation Taurus. This workhorse allows you to do some solid cargo running as well as some combat and room for a small crew. It's just a great all-round mission runner and awesome ship to experience Star Citizen with. This comes with access to the game and lifetime insurance as well. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during July. Each video is another chance to win. More details in the description below. Please consider supporting the channel with the join button under my videos or via Patreon. Links below to all of that. It goes a long way in helping us to be able to make daily Star Citizen content and Zin's law videos, all that sort of jazz. Thank you so much to all the glorious members that already do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can always help as well by sharing, liking, subscribing, and getting involved in the comments section. And thank you very much for those of you that watched to the end. It is appreciated.